Hi everyone, I'm Ali Grayment. Today I wanted to talk to you about what to do if you feel like you should be seeing more progress than you are seeing. It's very simple. What it comes down to is that the amount of reassurance you're doing, whether it's physical reassurance, a mental rumination, doesn't matter, but the amount of reassurance you're doing is more than a pushing through that you're doing. So anybody who has OCD is in exposures all the time. Being faced with an OCD situation is exposure. You're exposed to the thought, to the situation, whatever, the trigger. And now what? So it's either exposure and react a lot and get yourself worse or exposure and response prevention. So if you are accountable and you're actually tracking it throughout the day, so you have a chart, you have your one column with exposures, uh, successful exposures, and uh, uh, reassurance behaviors or compulsive behaviors, however you want to name it, depending on their situation. And you track it. So then there, th this takes the guesswork out of the situation. Then you can see, okay, so I gave in this many times. Uh, I resisted this many times. And now it makes sense why, you know, I feel how I feel, right? Like if you if you look at it in the course of a week, right? Because sometimes some days are just harder. You know, you, you got to give yourself a break as well, right? It, every day is not going to be perfect. But if you see that over the course of a week, you're continuously day after day giving in more than you are resisting, then we can, from that, we can conclude that in the course of this week, you've been making yourself feel worse and make OCD worse rather than making OCD better. So... And again, no blame, not feeling bad about it. You can't get into those emotions. You need to kind of just look at it as fact. This is what happened. I need to do better. And then my my recovery process is going to go faster. You know, because if you start to get into the, the blame and the, the I will never recover and this is so bad and I just want to lay down, that's not that's not the winning attitude with this. You have to look at it as a matter of fact. Okay, this is what happened. I wasn't doing good. And then break it down for yourself, right? So instead of, again, saying like all oh, the whatever, what exactly happened throughout the week? Were you overstressed? Were, was your attention not on recovery? Okay, if it wasn't on your recovery, what was it on? Was there something going on? Are you doing too much? Are you spread too thin? You know, so you need to understand uh, um, where the problem is coming from. Fix the problem so you're focused on recovery work. Because, well, focused on recovery work means you just have mental space for recovery work. If you're stressed mentally, right, then it's you're not really focused, right? But when you are focused on recovery work, you actually, uh, you can refocus back on doing everything else in life. So it's kind of, it still goes full circle, but you just can't be stressed where you're not thinking clearly. Because OCD makes it hard to think clearly anyway, right? But if you are focused on a million other things, that's not good. You know, or you're going places, you're, you know, all kinds of situations. Any change will most likely make OCD worse. For, I would say, 9 out of 10 people, any change will make OCD worse and make OCD flare up. So you have to take that into an account. So if you have this data over the course of a week of, okay, this is... This is what's happening. This is what I'm doing. So say um, if you're doing uh, uh, mental rumination, you don't have physical compulsions, you're doing mental rumination, then you're tracking how many minutes a day you are ruminating. So that way you are accountable for each minute you're ruminating, which is you're making yourself worse. You're getting deeper into OCD. So you're being accountable for that now. So you're saying, yes, this is a minute where I, I took a step back or this is an hour where I took a step back. And I'm going to try to do better tomorrow. And you might do only better by a minute or so, but it's still going to be a win. And those minutes add up. So if, say, for example, you started out and you were doing three hours of reassurance behavior, so three hours of rumination per day, and then you knocked it down by the end of the week, you knocked it down to two. Well, that's a lot. And then maybe next week, you'll knock it down to one, or maybe you'll take a week or two to stabilize, and then you'll knock it down to one. But that is how it's done. But if you're not accounting for that and you're just kind of looking at it as, um, well, you know, it's going how it's going and I don't know what's happening and I don't know why I feel like this and I don't know, I don't know, then, you know, there's no, you need to see exactly what is happening and you need to fix it. 
So fix outside factors, keep track of the actual uh, OCD related situations, re reassurance behavior, ruminations, compulsions, and keep track of the wins. And you do need to keep track of the wins because it's very important because you need to keep be keep being motivated. Also, um, a lot of the times I hear people will say that it's not, and I, I do, uh, I do really agree, you know, but to an extent that if you have a lot of exposures already, you kind of don't need to do um, additional exposures uh, that are like planned exposures. But um, what I like to say to that is that if you, if say, for example, you're exposed to your OCD fears, triggers all day anyway, but when you do it on purpose, you're kind of prepared for, for that OCD hit. So, and you're prepared to fight rather than when it kind of picks you out of the blue, you know? So if you're prepared to fight, you will handle it better. And then you have that frame of reference where you will say, well, I just fought this an hour ago, so I can handle it. So doing exposure and response helps. And with the thoughts, the way you do exposure and response, you just, you just bring on a thought and you're like, okay, so what? I don't care. I'm choosing to move on. Even if you don't feel like you don't care, it's kind of like fake it till you make it situation where you're, you're habituating to the thought. So then when the thought comes out of the blue, you won't be as affected, you know? And then in terms of physical compulsion, same exact thing. I just find that it helps. It's not, it's not nece necessary in terms of recovery. Um, it's not like a make or break, but it will make your recovery faster. So that's another tip. But I, I really do think that I know it's super annoying to be writing something down all day long. And uh, whenever I ask clients to write it down, they're like, really Ali, <laughs> you know, I, I can feel them rolling their eyes on the other side. Um, but it's, it's necessary because it, uh, um, it, it's just, it, it's huge when it comes to recovery. Accountability is really, really important. So it's just, I would say if you, you know, and you don't need to have it super detailed. You don't need to explain each situation. It's literally just a check mark. That's all you need to do. And you can do it on your phone. You don't need to do it on, you know, some sort of a, uh, on a computer, on a fancy spreadsheet. Just do it on your phone. It's fine. It's just, it's, it's for your personal use. So then after you can see, okay, where was the mistake made? And then you correct the mistake. So say, for example, um, you uh, got stressed out on a day or a day was really busy and you can see that you know, you were doing fine all week and then your compulsions jumped because you were so stressed out or a lot of the times the day after a big stressor, which it doesn't matter if it's a positive or a negative stressor, but the day after the stressor, uh, the compulsions jump because the real problem got solved, but the brain keeps going and the brain was already on high alert because of the real problem. And now it's on high alert because of OCD. So it found something OCD related to grab on to kind of as a segue from the real thing, you know? So if you see those patterns, the more you understand how OCD works, the more um, power you get, the more of a chance that it will not come back because you, you understand how it works. So if you get a weird thought, you know, and again, 50,000 thoughts a day, anybody can get a weird thought, but a person with OCD, they grab onto it. But if you know how OCD works next time, strange thought comes in and it scares you for whatever reason you, you won't grab onto it because you'll know you'll know oh this this sounds like that ocd theme that i heard ali talk about you know or whoever it doesn't have to be me but i'm just saying that you'll understand what's happening or i think i'm obsessing about this a little too much i think it's more than an average person would do i'm gonna i'm gonna choose to refuse i'm gonna choose to stop you know and those are your safeguards for not getting OCD again. So then once you get out of it, you get out of it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find these tips helpful. And again, I understand that nobody wants to spend more time writing things down, but it is uh, a good exercise. Even if you just keep it up for a week to see where, where your weak spots are, where your strong spots are, what is causing problems, what is causing uh, interference in your recovery, and then adjusting that, you know, this will give you a good overview. And if you don't want to keep it up past that, I, I would say at least try that because it, it will help 
um, it, it will help your recovery. And that's ultimately that's the only thing that matters is your recovery because that gives you the rest of your life back. Thank you for watching. I hope you find my videos helpful. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I do daily videos about all things related to OCD recovery. If you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program with me, all the information is on youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. If you are signing up, please book your sessions as far uh, as you can. So if, say, if you signed up for four sessions, if you can book all four, try to book all four. Um, if not, then book as many as you are, are able to, and then we'll figure it out once we start talking. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.